Hi, I'm uh, Jacob. I'm from a company called Deep Pathology. We were founded in uh, 2018 and we're developing digital pathology products for pharma and for uh, diagnostics. The talk today is about active learning for fast and efficient annotation of medical images. And we'll go for an example of how we're using active learning to build a do-it-yourself tool for pathologists so they can create their own cell detection algorithms. So in the field of uh, pathology, biopsies are taken from patients and are then examined under a microscope by pathologists. This is still how it's done in most of the world uh, today. We are in the field of digital pathology. So the biopsies are instead scanned by a digital scanner and converted into image files. Pathologists can then review these image files in the computer and we can also run computer vision algorithms on them. So these biopsies contain a lot of, uh, these biopsies contain tissue and the tissue contains a lot of different types of cells. The task of cell detection in pathology is about finding the locations of the cells and their boundary. It's called localization and understanding the type of every cell, classification. So cell detection is a very important task in pathology. For example, by counting the number of cancer cells and their density, like here on the image on the left, pathologists may be uh, able to make a better prognosis for patients. In drug development, by tracking specific types of cells before a drug was given, and then after a drug was given, then pathologists may be uh, able to better understand the effect the drug had. So it's a very important task. So there's a lot of recent work about cell detection in academia, but this work is very academic. And the guys, it, uh, it's staying in, uh, in academia, and the guys that actually need to use cell detection algorithms, the pathologists, aren't using them at all. So this was the motivation for us to develop a do-it-yourself tool for pathologists so they can create cell detection algorithms on their own data. This is a product we're developing called the Cell Detection Studio. So let's say we have a pathologist that wants to be able to uh, detect a specific type of cells. So typically the process to develop something like this will be that first you have an annotation stage, and then you're going to train a model on, uh, on the annotated data, and then you're going to inspect the quality of the model. Maybe you'll go back and decide to train another model, and maybe you'll go back and decide that uh, you want to do more annotation. And the thing we realize is that, the annotation is that most of the time is going to be spent in the annotation stage. And the annotation stage is actually very challenging. So first, usually the, annota uh, the annotation time is very limited. So we're going to end up with just a small portion of the entire well available data set uh, actually annotated. Also usually uh, medical data sets are very unbalanced. So either we're going to end up with too few images from some of the categories, or if you require a minimum number of images from every category, then it's going to take a very long time to cover all that. Also, if we uh, have unbalanced data, that uh, hurts the alertness during the annotation. Because let's say we have a type of cell that's very rare and it appears uh, once in a thousand images, then when we finally see that cell, it will be very easy to miss it because we're not expecting it. So that was the problem we wanted to solve. We wanted to make the annotation a lot more efficient to make the most out of the annotation time. So now let's go over how we're doing that. So first uh, we developed a, a cell detection uh, algorithm that's uh, able to detect cells in different types of, of images, different types of uh, uh, stainings, uh, image sources. It isn't able to understand the type of every cell, it's only able to find them. So then we can crop these cells and then we can learn a classification model on them to understand their type. So to do annotation for that, we can display the cells in the gallery and quickly go over them and set their type. So we converted the, uh, the object detection problem to a classification problem, which makes the annotation a lot easier. We're also doing something else. So during the annotation itself, there's a model training in the background, and that opens up uh, a few possibilities. One possibility is that then we can use active learning. So instead of just uh, uh, annotating random images, which is what you would uh, usually do, uh, we're going to select the images that we think the pathologist should annotate. So the promise of active learning is that we want to achieve higher accuracy with less data annotation. There are several uh, scenarios in active learning. The most common one is called the pool-based scenario, where we have a large pool of unlabeled data that we're going to select from. So the flow here is that we're going to annotate a few images, then we're going to train a model on these images, and then we're going to uh, use the model and uh, one, uh, some active learning algorithm to rank all the remaining unlabeled images. A rank here means how important is it to annotate each image. So then we're going to select the highest ranking images, we're going to remove them from the pool, 
and we're going to annotate them next. We're going to do this again and again until we decide to finish. So there's a family of active learning algorithms called uncertainty sampling. And the idea here is that we want to annotate images the algorithm isn't sure about. So let's give an, exa an, an example of a very common but uh, simple active learning algorithm. So let's say we have a classification model that's uh, outputting uh, uh, probability vector p. It's after a softmax layer, so it has probabilities. So now we can take the entropy of this vector as a measure of the uncertainty of the model. So let's look at an example. So let's say we have a two-category model. So if for one of the images, the, the output of the model was 0 and 100%, meaning it's very confident that the image belongs to the second category. So the idea is that, in, in this case, if the model is so confident, then it's probably correct. And if it would reveal the label of that image, it wouldn't be very informative. So we want to give it the low rank. And the entropy in this case will be 0. If for another image, the output will be 50% and 50%, that means the algorithm is confused between both categories, so we want to give it a high rank, and in this case, the entropy is maximized because everything is uh, uniform. So active learning is usually done sequentially, so we're playing a round-based uh, game. So we have an annotation step, then uh, after we finish annotating a few images, we're going to train a model, and only then after we uh, train that model, we're going to use it to rank all the remaining images, and only after we finish ranking, we're going to go back and uh, annotate again. So the downside of this is that then you have to wait for every stage to finish. So instead, we're doing non-sequential active learning. So the annotation, the training, the ranking, everything is happening together in the background. So for example, the ranking process is using a model that's uh, uh, constantly changing because we're training the model all the time in the background. And uh, uh, we're also training that model on a data set that uh, uh, that's growing because we're continuing to do annotations. So between two epochs of the, of the model training, the data set will change. So uh, the benefit of this is that then active learning is very fast. We don't have to wait for every stage to finish. But then this opens up a, a new line of problems. For example, if you have two images, one image was ranked 10 minutes ago and another image was ranked 10 seconds ago, then probably the more recent uh, uh, rank is more relevant so then we have to address that. So we mentioned that medical data sets are usually very unbalanced. And fortunately, we can use active learning to dramatically make the annotation process more efficient. So let's say we're able to measure how balanced the data set is. Let's call that balance factor. So when balance factor is high, we want to use regular active learning, meaning we want to fetch difficult images and annotate them. When the when balance factor is low, the data set is unbalanced, then we want to focus on balancing the data set. So how can we do that? One way is that if we're looking at the minority category score of images, then when the minority category score is high, it probably means that the image uh, belongs to the minority category. So if we would fetch that image, it would balance the data set. So now we can think of a new ranking function that has two terms. The first term just does regular active learning uh, when the data set is balanced. And the second term focuses on balancing the data set when the data set is unbalanced. So in between, we want to fetch difficult images that will also balance the data set. So how can we measure how uh, uh, balanced the data set is? So first, we need to count the portions of every category in the data set. For example, maybe 90% of the images belong to the first category and 10% belong to the second category. So we want to measure balance factor that's highest when the data set is perfectly balanced. We have the same number of images from every category. And we want it to be low when we have images from only one category. So we can think of a few ways to achieve that. For example, if we take the entropy of uh, uh, the portion vector d, then the entropy will be 0 when we have images from only one category in the data set. And it will be maximized when we have the same number of images from every category. Because of how we're using this uh, here, we want it to be bet between 0 and 1. So we also want to normalize it. So we'll have to divide the entropy by the maximum value the entropy can achieve, which is log the number of categories. We can also look at, uh, 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 as another example, we can look at the maximum value of D. So when the data set is uh, perfectly balanced, the maximum value will be very low. It will be 1 divided by N. And when the data set has images from only one category, then the maximum value will be 1. So then we can take 1 minus the maximum value as another measure. 
Uh, so now we're going to uh, see everything in action. So uh, this is a video uh, recorded from the Cell Detection Studio, which is a product we're going to release uh, soon. So this is a kidney slide that a pathologist gave us, and he asked us to detect all the red cells in this slide. So now we're detecting the cells, and we can then display them in a gallery to set uh, their type. So we're, going, uh, we're showing the detected cells in the gallery, and we're quickly go, we're going over them and setting the type. So when we have enough images from every category, a model starts to train in the background. Then we can use that model uh, to, uh, and an active learning algorithm to rank all the remaining unlabeled images. So what's happening now is that uh, when, when we're going to scroll down, it's going to fetch the next set of images for annotation. And we're going to select these images based on their active learning rank. So you can see that the data set uh, until now was pretty unbalanced. We didn't have a lot of uh, red cells. So the active learning algorithm is giving priority to balancing the data set. So it's fetching a lot of red cells so we can annotate them. So we can encounter these uh, uh, images from the minority categories a lot faster than otherwise. We can also interact with the images uh, during the annotation and training to see how we're doing. So here it's uh, showing the, the detected cells. Uh, since we're training a model, we can also track a uh, metric. So uh, uh, we can uh, look at uh, uh, loss and accuracy. And at some point, when the model is accurate enough, it's actually a lot more efficient to just use the predictions from the model as automatic annotations and correct that when that's uh, wrong, instead of just uh, annotating uh, everything ourselves. So uh, what's happening now is that we're just uh, scrolling down using this modem and it's uh, fetching uh, uh, new images using the active learning algorithm. We have their uh, label automatically set uh, uh, using the model, and we have to predict it, uh, we have to correct it when the predictions are uh, wrong. And this uh, type of annotation is very fast. We can get to a data set that has a few thousands of uh, cells in a matter of uh, minutes, which is uh, a lot uh, faster than otherwise. Uh, so, uh, to summarize this talk, we had the goal of making the most out of annotation time. To do that, we're training a model during the annotation. So we're using active learning to fetch difficult images that will improve the model the most. And we also modified the active learning algorithm to tackle the unbalanced uh, data problem, uh, which uh, is something you usually have with medical data sets. Then, because we have a model, we can also use auto annotations uh, and just use the predictions from the model in correcting them uh, which is uh, a lot easier than annotating everything uh, ourselves. <coughs> so this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we're working on. Uh, we're in a mission to build the world's most advanced cell detection platform, and uh, you should join us. Uh, want to <laughs> just uh, want to say thank you to our team, to Nitsan Sagiv, Chen Sagiv, Ido ben and also thanks to, uh, special thanks to Eldad Kleiman from Roche, whom we're collaborating with during the last uh, two years. <laughs>